days. I believe that the last days that was prophesied will come, are come. I believe we are living in them. I believe it's closer now than it's ever been. I believe it's five minutes till midnight. And I believe you better make sure that oil is in your lamp. You better make sure that your wick is trimmed. You better make sure you're praying. You better make sure you're fasting. You better make sure you're seeking God. You better take a hold of the horns of the altar. You better seek God for your family. You better seek God for your children. You better cry out to God because I'm telling you we are living in the last days. The end of the world is upon us. The consummation of time. And Paul wrote to Timothy and he said in the last days perilous times would come. Dangerous times would come. Things would be all out of whack. Things would be all in a mess. And where Jesus prophesied it. He said men's hearts would fail them for fear. He said there'd be earthquakes and famines in divers places. There'd be pestilence and, and there'd be a mess. And everywhere you look and we are seeing the signs of the time. The last days that will come. They have come. The last days that the Bible foretold. they are days of danger. they are days of deceit. they are days when men's hearts fail them for fear. they are days when people are looking for a self-help gospel. they are days when people don't really want the gospel truth anymore. They don't really want you to tell them that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature and old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. That means whatever I used to do, I can't do it no more. If I used to be a woman chasing tree basin, whiskey nipping, cocaine snipping, pill popping, weed chopping, tobacco chewing, cigarette sucking, pipe puffing, gambling, skirt chasing devil. When I get in Jesus and Jesus gets in me, I can't do that no more. Hallelujah. People don't want the gospel truth anymore. They are because, and I want to tell you, you know why I know it? Because people in churches are pulling in every worldly fleshly amusement that reaches the intellect but fails to touch the heart of men. And we are living in a day when they preach a false gospel and as a result they produce false converts. But listen, when people love sin and they drink iniquity down like water, we are living in the last days. Days when people love sin, when people love to fight, when people love to drink, when people love to cuss and lie and cheat and steal, when people love to commit adultery, when folks are fornicating, when our young people, I feel like preaching tonight, when our young people think no more of losing their virginity than they do shaking your hand, we are living in the last days. When preachers are cracking beers from the pulpit, we're living in the last days. When preachers are cussing and using filthy language, we're living in the last days. Hallelujah. When the government won't decree righteous judgment and they allow the murder of the unborn, we are living in the last days. When it becomes illegal to preach the gospel on the street corner, but every sodomite, homosexual, lesbian can say anything they want, go anywhere they want, and hold any protests they want, we are living in the last days. I know we don't like it. I know, hallelujah, that it won't make us popular, but I wanted to tell you the days that will come, they have come, and because we stand up for Jesus, we are living in perilous times. We are living in dangerous days, and if we're going to make it through them, we've got to take a hold of the horns of the altar, grab a hold of that prayer altar, and not get up until we've had an encounter with God, because the last days are upon us. The last days are a time where there's a great falling away, when men and women are being ushered by the spirit of Antichrist to believe false gospels and perverted doctrines. We're living in the last days, when people don't even realize that they are becoming apostles of the devil, and they don't even know it. We're living in the last days, when people are so spiritually sleeping that they can no longer tell the difference between the real gospel and the false gospel. The false gospel being a gospel of prosperity, a gospel of self-help humanism, a gospel of easy believism. When people can no longer tell the difference between the real gospel and the false gospel, the days that will come, they have come. And you better guard yourself. You better put on the whole armor of God. You better get ready to fight. You better get ready for battle. You better get your prayer closet dusted out and the cobwebs clicked out because we're living in the last days. Perilous times are upon us. Dangerous days are ahead. Dangerous days are here. And before we know it, the American church is going to go through persecution. So you better get ready. Yeah, that's right, brother. Come for on. the last days. When truth has fallen in the streets and is now being trodden under the foot of evil men and seducers and men of deceit, we know that we are living in the last days. What I'm telling them, Jesus is about to return. You better get right. You better repent. You better live holy. When Jesus splits the eastern skies, I want to be living holy in the sight of God and lifting up a standard 
and looking at the devil possessed ill religious world that we're living in and saying even though it's the last days God has raised me up as a voice of truth to stand for what's right to live what's right and to show the world the standard of holiness eventually the sin that we loved and we resisted the spirit of God for when he pulls it back God will bind us with the very sin that we love so much and we'll go to hell holding with our own iniquities and that's where America's at Come on, brother. Amen. And so I know we're living in the last days because conviction is absent from the house of God. But let me tell you something. Just because conviction, just because God's pulling his spirit back, I say, Jesus, whatever you do, don't do it in this house. Whatever you do, don't do it in this place of worship. We need your spirit now more than we ever have. We need the Holy Ghost now more than we ever have. We need God to strive with men, wrestle against them, bring them to faith and repentance, open up their heart and cause them to be born again. We need the Holy Ghost. Jesus, whatever you do, don't remove your spirit from this house. Hallelujah. One of the reasons why people can lie and feel no remorse about it is because the spirit of God has pulled back out of their life and have left them to their own ill religious devices of iniquity. And eventually the same spirit that wanted them to repent will bind them with the cords of their own iniquity and throw them into a devil's hell and they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. One of the reasons why people can drink alcohol and feel no remorse about it is because the Holy Ghost has left their heart a long time ago and now he no longer deals with them to repent of their ungodliness and one day they'll be bound with the cords of Budweiser and thrown into hell. I know it's not popular, but it's God's Word. It's the gospel truth of the matter. One of the reasons why abortion is on demand and this rotten nation kills 4,200 babies every day in the abortion clinics is because the Spirit of God is no longer dealing with people and God is allowing America to be holy with her own sins and iniquities. One of the reasons why you can cut somebody out and feel not, and feel not feel bad about it and walk away feeling like you're okay is because the Holy Ghost has left you. When they pay, when you can't carry a Bible into a public school, but that same dirty, rotten federal government will send money in to pass out condoms to children, I know we're living in the last days. When we can live together out of wedlock and feel no remorse about it, we're living in the last days. When men can rewrite the Word of God and call it a new version, the whole time destroying the blood and destroying the deity of Christ and destroying the old time gospel message that has brought revival to this nation. When men can rewrite the Bible and pick up perversions of the Bible and read them and study from them without feeling no remorse about it, it tells me the last days are upon us. The days that will come have come and the Holy Ghost is no longer striving with people concerning their sin. When men make statements why I just don't believe in that portion of the Bible, it's because the Holy Ghost has pulled back out of their life. The Holy Ghost ain't going to let you deny tongues and get away with it. No, sir. The Holy Ghost ain't going to let you deny that Jesus is God in the flesh and get away with it. If you start denying fundamental doctrines of the Bible, the Holy Ghost will be with you. And if you can deny the Word and deny the truth and spit on the Bible and pick up your own doctrinal beliefs and systems over the Word of God, that's a sign that the Holy Ghost has written you off and He's away from you and He's backed out of your life. They don't even talk about sanctification anymore. They don't even talk about the blood of Jesus anymore. They don't even talk about living holy anymore. They preach a self-help gospel. They tell you how to have your best life now. How to, God, what is God's best for you? I tell you what's God's best. Repent and believe the gospel. That is God's best for you. Come out from among them and be separated, Joel. That's God's best for you. Amen. Put down your sin. Amen. Put down that bottle of beer. Put down that booze. Put down that lottery. Put down that gambling casino. Put down the 
the sin of perversion and sodomy. Put it down. That's God's best for you. Come out from among them and be separated. This what I'm preaching to you tonight is the true, unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm glad that even in the midst of this Laodicean, have backslidden church age, there's a church in a warehouse. Hallelujah. And we have not given in to the spirit of Antichrist. We will lift up a standard. We will lift up our voice like a trumpet and declare what thus saith the Lord. Why there's still time? 